people are great to have around as a rule. But sometimes, a person just needs a little alone time to clear their head and focus. And don't you wish you could disappear somewhere where absolutely no one could get to you? Well, that was exactly the dream of one man at Crawfordsville, Indiana, and he made it happen in a big way. His name was Lou Wallace. Never heard of him? Prepare to be educated and amazed. Born at Brookville, Indiana in 1827, this man was a rock star of his day and is responsible for several Hollywood movies, a cartoon, and even a miniseries. He was a Civil War general, lawyer, governor of New Mexico Territory, diplomat to the Ottoman Empire, writer, world traveler, lifelong adventurer, and just like Leonardo da Vinci, a renaissance man with many unique hobbies and interests. And if you go to the United States Capitol and take a tour, guess what's in Statuary Hall? Each state can only have two statues. One is the 14th governor of Indiana, Oliver Morton. And the other is Lou. If you ask me, that's pretty epic. So having accomplished a long list of very impressive things, his main interest here in Crawfordsville was to totally disappear. And he had the money to do it. Take a good look at this place. Completed in 1898, there are no clear windows to peek inside. It's built like a huge vault, as tight as Fort Knox. It looks something like a fancy mausoleum, but what was going on inside was far from dead. It was a creative workspace, or as Lou put it, a pleasure house for his soul, a detached room away from the world and its worries. But it was not a house. His house was about 200 feet away. This was by all means an escape. The quintessential man cave. He made it so he could walk out his back door, through his fantasy garden, enter these vaulted doors, and be the sole citizen of Don't Bother Me Land. If you look about halfway up, You'll see fancy limestone effigies on the side. These are characters from the books he wrote. So each time he walked to the garden, he'd be reminded of the worlds he created and ones still in his head. Windows at the bottom of the stairs provide a tantalizing look inside. Therein rests a once fancy carriage, only a hint of what grand things must be within these walls. At one time, he had a large pool around this place. It was stocked with fish, making it a little like an island from a storybook. But with grandkids running around, he was worried about them falling in, so had it completely drained. Going up the back stairs provides a glimpse of a graceful platform. But perhaps we should learn a little about this interesting, eccentric man before we step inside. At the Visitor Center Carriage House, you buy a ticket. You are then shown a short movie introducing you to the man who was Lou Wallace. In his lifetime, he was many things, but was most famous as the author that wrote Ben-Hur a Tale of the Christ, published in 1880. It was a huge success. Long after Lou's lifetime, Ben-Hur was made into a silent movie in 1907. Another MGM film in 1925. And most famously, in 1959, starring Charlton Heston, which won an Academy Award. In 2003, it was made into an animated film. In 2010, it was made into a miniseries. And finally, 
yet another movie was released in 2016. For a book that was written over 140 years ago, it's got a lot of mileage. The visitor center has actual Hollywood used props on display. But it all started with one man's appreciation for history and needing a quiet place to think. Let's take a look inside to see what a pleasure house for the soul looks like. Inside is a desk for writing, surrounded by tons of books, paintings, sculptures, and all the things that brought him comfort. Looking up, you'll see a majestic skylight that fills the room with the sun's rays. While many of these paintings were either purchased or given to him, he also did some of these by himself. Instead of glass to keep dust off his books, he had a rail of draperies. Across from his desk and library, he built a fireplace and comfortable place to read. Stained glass, let illuminating light in, but prying eyes out. Above the mantle are his swords, pistols, rank bars, and stirrups from his days in the military. Nearby is a chest of items used for making violins. He made them for fun and gave them away as gifts. But Lou also thought of creature comforts. He had a sink and bathroom installed, because why come out here, get in that creative frame of mind, and then have to leave when nature calls your name. A spiral staircase goes down to the basement to store all the special things he'd collected in his lifetime of travels and adventures. There's also a good sized attic above the fireplace. This place is very much a chapel of the mind, a timeless time capsule of what one man thought was important. Lou would come out here, insulated from the outside world, and work at his desk or sit in his easy chair, reading, filling his soul with contentment. Standing here, in this space, among his favorite things, is a very solemn experience, as if Lou is coming back at any moment. Almost completely unchanged, it's like entering the late 1800s, in viewing what gave one man a sense of peace from a very chaotic world. With every outside noise and care prevented from entering this sanctuary by a solidly locked portal. Actor Charlton Heston, who starred in the 1959 version of Ben-Hur, once came to Crawfordsville and visited Lou's Pleasure House for the Soul. It's said that he just asked for some quiet time, alone, in this place, to sit here. Perhaps he wanted to reflect on the journey of a man sitting and writing Ben-Hur in the 1800s to its publishing in 1880, culminating in the 1959 release of an epic, timeless movie. Like a baton was passed from one man to another, across the ages. It's not known what Charlton Heston did in this quiet time, 
but perhaps he said thank you. Even today, in downtown Crawfordsville, it still feels all by itself and hidden, just like Lou Wallace intended. Virtually unknown to those outside of town, it stands as one man's dream of peace and a quiet place to hear his own thoughts. I can't help but think he was onto something.